since the law of the Lord is perfect, every deviation from it must be evil. Those who disobey the commandments of God and teach others to do so are condemned by Christ. A special good morning to our viewing audience. Our ministry is the real Bible-based prophecy. And this program is called The Bible and You. The last message for the last generation. We are here on Synergy TV every Sunday morning from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. We can also be viewed on Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble to take you on that spirit-filled journey through the infallible word of God. Today, we want to just turn some pages back as we recap on prophecy and the purpose of prophecy. As we all know that this is a more sure word, which is like a guiding light in the midst of this dark world. Take heed, my brethren, take heed. The Bible was designed to be a guide to all who wish to become acquainted with the will of their maker. Prophecy is important in these times. So as we go back, I urge you to grab your Bibles, a pen and a paper. And as you listen carefully to this recap, which may clear up certain questions that you may have within your mind. So today, my brothers and sisters, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you according to the word of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to give you thanks and praise even for life and your word, which you have said that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray today, even as we recap on what was said, reference prophecy, Lord Father. We pray that you would allow a deeper understanding of where we are and allow us, Lord Father, to make that conscious decision to turn to you and serve you before this world has ended. Father, I pray and ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us at this time. And I pray also that your words will be placed in our mouth. That only truth will be spoken. And it will go forth with clarity, Lord. In a mighty way. I pray through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning once again. I'm Ella Showing Paul. And we have Pastor Ian Morris, who is not a stranger to uh, this set. Pastor, how are you this morning? Yeah, good. I'm good. I'm, 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 I'm excited. We're excited to just go into this uh, recap. Of, yes. Um, because we were in a journey. And in this journey, as we, we looked at, at, at prophecy, we even had a long um, uh, period where we looked at the sanctuary. Yes, yes. And uh, um, this is, I'm glad uh, what you said in the introduction that, that and, and you quoted really directly from 2 Peter 1.19. And in 2 Peter 1.19, we have also a more sure word. Yes. Let's, let's read it to the people. 2, 2 Peter 1.19. And it reads, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Yes, and, and, and it says, uh, uh, um, ye, do, ye do well. So um, it, is, it, is a, it, it is a good thing. It is, it is, it is something that is necessary. It is, yeah. it, it is in your own interest. Ye do well that you take heed. 
We have a more sure word, word of, prophecy. of prophecy. And this, this, this more sure word is a stable word. It's a firm word. It's a steadfast word. It's a, it's a, it's a force. We have a, we have a more sure word of, of, of prophecy. And, and, and the Bible, the Bible is saying relative to, to prophecy that be, this is stable. It's a stable word. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a powerful word. It's, it's, it's a word that will not shift. It's a force. And because a prophecy is what it is, it is important that you take heed. As, and how do you take heed? It is described here, take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Accept it as something that's beautiful, something that is illuminating, and move towards the light. And prophecy shines as a light in a dark place until the day dawns. And the day star arise in your heart. So prophecy leads to the emergence of Jesus shining in your heart. Amen. Prophecy leads to Jesus. So, so to despise prophecy is to despise Jesus. You cannot despise prophecy and experience the dawn of Jesus in your heart. You know, Pastor, I, when I, I look at that, um, that text, you know, it, it, it brings to my mind, what about if we, we didn't have this prophecy, this, this sure light yeah. shining in this dark place? What would our lives be without this prophecy? Well, it wouldn't lead to the day star dawning. It, it wouldn't lead to the emergence of the sunrise yes. of the Son of yeah. God. I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to this series in the Bible and you. Uh, we have faithfully presented prophecy. And sometimes the prophecy that we present is not well liked. Yes. It's not popular. No, nobody billows it. You know, you don't you don't see it, hear it on the in the potter's house. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you do not hear it in, in famous grand religious arenas, but it is still a prophecy. prophecy. And, the, and the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel is a, is such a powerful book that, uh, that, that skeptics are not able to gain say. Hmm. And you know, they said with Daniel, well, first this, they, 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 they said Daniel didn't exist. Then they, they found that Daniel actually existed. <laughs> and then they, so, so there must be another lie. Remember, Jesus said, let no man deceive you. So the skeptics first said, Daniel didn't exist. This is just a fictional, a mythical book. Then, when it was clear that Daniel actually existed, what you had them saying is, well, Daniel really did exist. But it wasn't one man. Daniel was actually a collection of writings. And these writings occurred as there was a transition in power. For example, they, they are saying, uh, for instance, they are saying that uh, when uh, Greece came, uh, 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 Middle Persia came on the scene, there was a writer who wrote that. Then when uh, 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 um, um, Greece came on the scene, a writer came when Greece was on the scene and wrote, wrote that. that. And, and Babylon was on the scene, a writer came in and wrote that. Then you had a 16-year-old boy, a shepherd boy in the Middle East, throwing a rock just idly. Hmm. And he started to hear jazz crashing. Through another rock, more jazz crashing. Went in Fung crew, called his father. His father came, um, took these ancient writings, wrote written on leather, and sold it to a, 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 a seller. And this seller, seeing that, hey, this could be some great artifacts and so on, sold it to a museum. And if he, if, he, if, he, if he knew the value of it, 
<laughs> he would have sold it for 10 times more. But, but, but from there, we know, and, and, and by all accounts, this scroll was written 2,000 years, more than 2,000 years before. In that screw, in that uh, uh, um, 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 area, it was also discovered the book of Isaiah. So the book of Isaiah that they said didn't exist, the book of Daniel that they said didn't exist, that was just was 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 just a mythical book and so on. They found that this actually was an ancient book. It is the oldest scroll alive. This, this old scroll, and again, I'm saying this was the, it's the oldest scroll, the oldest document in terms of, in terms of the Bible. Um, this document revealed that all that we had believed was actually true. This Daniel was not a series of men over a long period of time. It was, act it was one man. He was actually from Babylon. And, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, God will give you enough information for you to believe the truth. But God is not, God will not remove every error if you want to believe the error. If you want to believe the error, you will find sufficient evidence that will meet your desire to believe an error. Yeah. But if you want to believe biblical truth, if you want a more sure word of prophecy, if this is what you want, you would find in scripture and in history enough information that you could stake your belief and position on the word of God. People keep jumping from one thing to the next. There was a time they said David didn't, did not exist, that Solomon did not exist, these kingdoms did not exist. And then they found um, in archaeological discoveries, they found that David actually exists. Solomon existed. Sodom and Gomorrah, by the way, existed. Mm. And many of the places in scripture actually existed. existed. Yeah. They found that. And then they moved on to another argument. If you want to disbelieve the word of God, you will have enough evidence, enough information to do so. But if you want to believe, God will provide you with a lot of evidence. My brothers and sisters, ladies and, gen and gentlemen, we have a more sure word of prophecy it shines as a light in a dark place until the day dawns. Or uh, the, 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 the Greek would also say, unto the dawning of the day. Or, or uh, uh, um, unto this, 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 uh, 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 um, or uh, even until. But but I am not. But I want you to understand when when Jesus, when the Bible, when Peter says until the day dawn, it doesn't mean that that when the day dawns you would no longer need it. Hmm. But it's also unto the dawning of the day. Now, when Jesus comes in glory, you would not need the study of prophecy. The people who will be there will be studying the one who prophecy pointed to. Amen. Oh, my, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, prophecy is absolutely important. But the Bible did not stop there. The Bible went on to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, and it says, 2 uh, Peter, Peter chapter 1, verse yeah. 20. Second and it says, Peter. knowing this first, that no prophecy mm -hmm. of the scripture is of any private interpretation. It, it is not of private interpretation. interpretation. Yes. It is not your own interpretation. Don't treat it as your own business. Mm -hmm. don't, don't treat it as if it's your own establishment that you could, could decide 
what it means. The Bible has to interpret itself. So, yes. If it's not your personal interpretation, then whose interpretation should it be? Hmm. The Bible would say line upon line, here a little and there a little. a little. So let's read that text. Isaiah chapter 28 uh, verse 10. Okay. Isaiah 28 verse 10. You know what? Let's let's go to nine. Let's let's go to nine because that is is very important. Let's go to Isaiah twenty eight verse nine. Verse nine. It says, "Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine?" Okay, so let, let's just let's let's just pause here. Um, and this this word uh, translated translated doctrine would mean an announcement. Okay. Um, a theme, a news, a report, a tiding. Mm. Theme, an announcement, a news, a report, tiding, doctrine. So it begins by saying, who shall teach knowledge? You remember we said it is not of private interpretation. interpretation yeah. So if it is not your personal interpretation, if you can't just come up with something in your mind, and sometimes um, because, you know, there are so many PhDs and, and theology and, and, and all, of the, all of these things, sometimes uh, um, people are pushed to come up with something new, something fresh, something different from everybody else. That can lead to pride. We must be very, very careful. Hmm. But the Bible is saying that it cannot be you coming up with something new, something different, something strange. You cannot be like the Greeks in Paul's day and the, the Epicureans. You know, they were, they were always there to just to hear something new, something different, something strange, something intellectual, something scholarly. They, they were focused on that. They were obsessed about that. But the Bible is here saying, no, this is not how prophecy functions. Mm -hmm. Prophecy does not even function like scholarship. Hmm. Prophecy, if you want to understand it, it is not your personal reasoning, your personal, your personal, even, it is not even uh, uh, based or limited by your... Um, preferred research or preferred conclusion so how do we how do we do it well the bible says here whom shall he teach knowledge whom shall he make to understand Sorry, doctrine sure. you want to know more about god do you want to know what's the true doctrines because there are god's many and lord's many there are so many churches hundreds of different churches Many of them saying different things. How should we know truth from right. error? Yeah. Here's what the Bible says. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So, so uh, 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 Peter would say, um, you have to move from milk and go to strong meat. Talking about, and he's talking about about doctrine okay john would say leaving the uh, uh leaving the 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 the, the leaving uh, baptism let's go on to the to the doctrine of christ mm -hmm. strong meat let's 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 go from something that is so easy to understand to, right. to, to to be able to unlock the more complicated sections of the word of God so that we can make it easy to understand to people. So them that are weaned from the milk, mm -hmm. because some people, they have come to church and, and they, they don't want, um, they want milk. Yes. Continue. Just say, Jesus is the Lord. They'll say, hallelujah. Play some drums. Dance up in the place. Form in the mouth. Beat up on the ground. Wine in church. How? Let's have a fet. We have aerobics in church. You know? mm -hmm. People just come for aerobics. Let's go for that rather than I've come to hear 
the word of God. Lord, what do you want to teach me? So some people, they don't want prophecy at all. Just tell me that Jesus loves me. But in prophecy you have, Jesus loves you. In prophecy you have, Jesus is concerned. In prophecy you find hope. So it says, they that are weaned from the milk, you have to want more than simply Jesus wept. You have to want more than simply the parables. Because, because Jesus will give, the Bible will have areas of milk so that people can grow up and become adult Christians or adult men and women of God. Mm. That's the intent. <laughs> but what you have is a bunch of Christians in diapers <laughs> and they don't want anything else. <laughs> they oh. don't want nothing more. They can't take yam and cassava. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, it's a challenge. And you know when you have a baby, when a baby is born, and, and you, you give them, you start giving them strong food. You have to be very close to them because they choke. Choke, yeah. I said that Christian <laughs> choking. All right. They're reaching for the bottle steady. Hmm. And that's a problem. So, so the Bible is saying, hey, who shall he teach? Listen to the kind of people that he shall teach knowledge and understanding doctrine. You have to be weaned from the milk. You have to be drawn from the breast. You can't be a baby forever. You True. can't be an True. infant Christian forever. 20 years is an infant. So, so this is how, this is what, pe this, is, this is the method people who are growing in Christ, they would use. For, for precept must be a must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. precept it also yeah. means commandments or injunction okay. upon injunction, Junction. commandment upon commandment. Yes. Precept. Saying upon saying, you know. Okay. okay. Precept upon precept, line mm -hmm. upon line, line upon line. So line, Here, so line, line upon, upon line. line, rule upon rule. It, it is like a musical instrument, chord upon chord. So if chord comes upon chord, you have a song. Hmm. Link it together. That's what the Bible is saying. Link it together. And, and, and then it, it would also mean string upon string. Hmm. Each string playing its part. Link it together. All the texts related to the, to, to the coming of Jesus Christ. All the texts related to the love of God. All the texts related to sin, all the texts related to commandments, all the texts related to the Sabbath, all the, all the texts related to how you love each other, all the texts related to prophecy. Link it together and let it be like a song, a well-tuned song, line upon line, line upon line. Go ahead. Yes. And there a little. That's so it. line That's upon line, That's line upon line. Here there a little, there a little, and there, there a, a little. little. Yes. So here a little, um, a, a, a small, a, a, a dwindling, dwindle portion, and there a little. Mm. From here, from there, but they must be related because it's a musical instrument. It's a song. So you cannot, you cannot, you cannot mismatch it. Yeah. You have to align connected chords together, connected strings together, and so we can have the tapestry of prophecy. Amen. Amen. So that's that's the that's the purpose of, of prophecy. And prophecy is very important. In the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. And we know it. Uh, it says, surely yeah. the Lord will do what? Nothing. Yeah. All right. But he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So you have to be a servant of God. The secrets are revealed to the prophets. He did not say the secrets would be revealed to, to the evangelists, even though God will reveal his secrets. But you see, 
there's a, there's a, there's a pecking order. God does things in order. He will give it from the angel to the prophet, according to Revelation chapter 1. From the angel to the prophet, then to the people. That's mm -hmm. how it goes. God is a God of order. So if we violate the order of God, we have a problem. What we have in our time is evangelists who did not concern about the prophets. You have teachers who are not concerned about the prophets. You have scholars who are not concerned about the prophets. But you cannot, to, 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 to reject the prophet is to run ahead and teach your own thing. It is to run ahead and say your own thing, write your own thing. And that is what a lot of people and, and the challenges in, 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 in so many circles, including the church, that the prophet wants to replace, not the prophet, the, 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 the teachers, teachers and the preachers want to replace the prophet. The scholars want to replace the prophet. And even at this time, you know, we, we realize too, with, with that sort of a process, we, we have... Um, you may have a lot of issues. We have a lot where, of yeah, yeah, where people uh, eventually will be taking uh, prophecy for granted. What the Bible can prophecy outlines. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, so when you know in the book of Ephesians, I think it's Ephesians chapter four, he outlines why he gave prophets, why he gave teachers, why he gave apostles, and 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 if we reject the prophet then we are violating God's order. Anytime we, violating, we violate God's order, we offer strange fire mm. in the sanctuary. It happened with Nadab and Abayu. They, 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 they created fire of their own oh, no. kindling. So my, my brothers and sisters, as we continue to, to, uh, to recap, we looked at... Uh, the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel chapter 2, in Daniel chapter 2, there was an awesome, uh, awesome uh, 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 king, uh, a prophecy, sorry. Mm -hmm. And this prophecy was a metallic prophecy. It was a metal man. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this uh, uh, metal man, the head was of gold. The chest, that's Daniel chapter 2, the chest was of silver. silver. Yeah. The waist of bronze, uh -huh. Uh -huh. the legs of iron, the feet, part iron, part clay. But the Bible did not stop there. There was a stone cut out without hands. Mm. And it went forth according, according to the Bible, according to the, to the word of God, and smote the, the, the image, the, the image mm. at the feet, representing that in the last days, Jesus will come. In fact, the prophecy would say God will set up a kingdom that shall not be destroyed. It's a kingdom that shall not be destroyed. And then in the book of Daniel chapter 7, we went on to Daniel chapter 7. And there were four great beasts yeah. that came from the sea and each different from the other. Yeah. We learned from, from Revelation chapter 17 that the sea would represent People, people and tongues and nations. So these, these beasts, uh, 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 Daniel said, your head is the head of gold. In, in Daniel chapter 7, the lion, the mm. symbols change, but the prophecy didn't change. So God would oftentimes change the symbol, but the prophecy remains the same. And anytime God changes the symbol, is for us, it's, it's, it is the purpose is to clarify prophecy or to show an aspect of prophecy that you would ignore if he did not change the symbols. So in Daniel chapter 7, the symbols would change. It was the same prophecy. Okay. And, and, and uh, 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 um, Babylon is the lion. And uh, after Babylon, and by the way, just in case somebody would be saying, well, we're in Revelation 17, is Revelation 17, 15. 
when the according to Jeremiah 49 verse 36 and 37 means war, conflict, turmoil, and beasts in, in the prophecy would mean kingdoms, Daniel 7, 17. After that, after that, we, well, we also looked at the fact that all of these beasts were unclean. These yeah. beasts were an abomination. After that, you had a bear. And, and the Bible would say suddenly another beast, a second like unto a bear. And the bear would represent the Medes and the Persian, this, 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 this dual empire. And the Medes were subjugated by the Persians. The Bible says uh, one came up after. And, and in, in Daniel chapter 8, you'd have, you'd have the same thing. Uh, of the Medes and the Persians, but one is high, and the Persians became higher. Medo Persian Empire. That would last from, from 5 to the 9 BC to 3 to the 1 BC. It's counting down, mm. right? So it's, it's BC. And the Medes and the Persians, they spread throughout from Persia, they influenced even India and they affected Indian culture. Mm. And made it even more prejudice. The Medes and the Persians. But, but that, it did not stop there. It went to Greece. And Greece came and overthrew through the amazing Alexander the Great. Represented by bronze in Daniel chapter 2. And a leopard in Daniel chapter 7. The Medes, the, 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 the Greece would last from 3 to the 1 B.C to 168 BC. Long time, but, but these things come to an end. Human institutions will come to an end. Human empires will come to an end. And there's, there's one critical, there are some critical um, 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 symptoms when an empire is coming to an end. They become more immoral. Mm -hmm. They have games or theaters, or they preoccupy their population with entertainment to keep their population together. And all of these things we saw. And interestingly, of, of, of the set of the of the four empires, they become more debased. Homosexuality rises, mm. it thrives. America is at its waning stage. America is coming to an end. She still has something to do, you know. She still has a work to do to bring all the world at the foot of the beast. But, but America is at its waning stages. After that, you, have, you had another kingdom that Daniel could not describe. More diverse. From it's diverse others. from all the others. Mm. It is brutal, according to him, a teeth of iron, and it was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue. It was an absolutely brutal kingdom. And Rome was super brutal. Um, look at what it did to the Germanic tribes. <laughs> look at what it did to the Celtics when they came over to, to, to England. Rome was absolutely tyrannical. And by the way, divided Rome, which is Europe right now, is absolutely tyrannical. People with all oh, these sophisticated and civilized, uh-uh. Europe continues to demonstrate a high level of barbarism. Look at what happened to, in, to Luamba, that, that is in the Congo, the first democratically elected government uh, prime minister in the Congo. He was assassinated. And his assassination, and it, this is public record, his assassination was okayed by Dwight Eisenhower. They brutalized the man. 
publicly, they wanted to send a message mm -hmm. and destroyed him. And what happened after with the combination of Belgium, the United States, and other countries in Europe, they devastated that place to the point where they used to, they, it, it became normal to cut off the hands mm -hmm. of the people in the Congo. And they would make chocolate, chocolate cakes, cakes of hands. Yeah. They celebrated this thing. Barbarism. What 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 civility are you talking about? That's not civilization. Mm. That that that's that's barbaric. Mm. But that's what that's what happened. So the last part, which is divided Rome, Rome was split up into ten major kingdoms. Mm. Part iron, part clay. So Rome will exist to the end of time. What you have in the United States, Roman pillars, Roman government, Roman symbolism. What you have dominating in the world, Rome is still here. You look at oh, the yeah. church of Rome and the church of Rome has embraced all the concepts of Rome and Greece and some of Medo Persia. And, and the church keeps Rome alive. Rome is still here. But the Bible says that in those days, the last days, according to Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7, the prophecy is, is a little different. It is not iron mixed with clay. What do you have? You have horns. And then you had another horn coming up. My brothers and sisters, just as God said, just as the prophecy says, uh, uh, um, you had emerging the Germans, the Swiss, the French, the Italians, the English, the Portuguese, the, the Spanish, the Alemannis, the Germans, the Burgundians, the Swiss, the Franks, the French, the Lombards, the Italians, the Saxons, the English, the Suevis, the Portuguese, the Visigoths, the Spanish. But you had three others. The Hirales, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths. And they were plucked up from the roots by a horn that emerged when, Jim, when, when the Alemannis were set, when the Burgundians were set, when the Franks were set, when the Lombards were set, when the Saxons, the Suevis, and the Visigoths, when German, Switzerland, France, Italy, English, uh, 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 England, sorry, Portugal, Spain, when they were in place, another power emerged that destroyed three other powers that prevented it from having political and religious authority over the divided nations of Rome and even large sections of the world. Just like what God says. But this horn is going to be religious. You go on to read in Daniel. This horn is speaking pompous words. This horn is different from the others. Daniel chapter 7 verse 8. Daniel chapter 7 verse 24. We are recapping here. This horn with a rose among the ten horns. This horn comes out of Rome. This horn arose after the ten horn. After the breakup of Rome, this horn, number three, is different from all the other ten horns. It does not have simply political power, but religious power. This horn displaces three other kingdoms, and it, therefore it has the ability to make war. Somebody always fights for this horn. This horn has eyes of a man. It's a symbol of wisdom and, in, and intelligence. That is uh, this horn. This horn, Daniel chapter 7, verse 24, shall be different from all of the first, all of the first, all of the other horns, because the other horns were simply political kingdoms. But this horn is going to be religious and political. This horn will speak pompous words. This horn will wear the saints. This horn will be a persecuting power. This particular horn, this horn will last for three and a half prophetic years or 1,260 prophetic days. 
According to the book of Numbers, chapter 14, Numbers, uh, chapter, chapter 14, and Ezekiel, chapter 4, verse 46. So let's read Numbers, chapter 14. And it reads, After the number of the days in which ye search your land, mm -hmm. even 40 days, each day for a year, yes, sir. shall ye bear your iniquities, even 40 years, mm -hmm. and ye shall know my breach of promise. My breach of promise. So, so God is producing a prophecy. And God is saying, 40 days, it will be 40 years. God is using a day principle here. But, but, but some, some people would say, oh, pastor, numbers is a little stretch. Hmm. Let me, let's go to another text that proves, that supports this statement hmm. uh, and this conclusion, which Ezekiel. is a biblical conclusion. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse, verse six. 6. And it reads, And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side. And thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day mm -hmm. for a year. Each day for a year. So the here is another prophecy, and it, it would be important. Read the entire chapter of Ezekiel chapter Not four. Four. I yeah. urge you, read the entire chapter of Ezekiel chapter four. God is giving a prophecy, a prophecy about Israel. A prophecy that will affect Israel. So if Israel wanted to know what is going to happen in the future, Israel would have taken note of what Ezekiel was saying. Mm -hmm. And God says, the amount of days you lie, each day equals a year. It will, it, it will determine what will happen. But why is God using a day for a year when he's speaking, when he's sharing prophecy to us human beings? Because when it comes to human beings, mm. our institutions, our lives, what we do is measured by God in days. Mm. In the book of Job, chapter 32, verse 7. Job 32, verse 7. And it reads, I said... Days should speak mm -hmm. and multiplied of years should teach wisdom. All right. So, so Job, Job is saying, hey, days would speak. Should speak, yes. And multitude of years should multitude. teach wisdom. Yes. So you see mm -hmm. days and years mingling here. Let's go to something else that is even stronger. Job chapter 10 verse 5. So when God is teaching human beings, and especially in a prophetic sense, he uses days. Okay. 10 verse 5. Verse 5. And it reads, Are thy days as the days of man? As the days of man. Are thy years as man's days? Are thy years as, as, as man's man. days? You see, years and days... So thy days as the days of man, uh, uh, um, um, uh, David would say, um, uh, all the days of our lives are three score and ten. The days of our lives, three score and ten. He's talking about years. Yeah. But yet he's making that day reference. So when it comes to man in inspired word, God is saying, hey, it's days. And why is he saying days? That's a beginning and an end. Hmm. It will come to an end. Your life is measured in days. Not only in a literal sense, but in a symbolic sense as well. Because you have a beginning and an ending. Your life is measured in yom. Evening and morning. And in, in the book of Psalm, chapter 77, verse 5, talking about how days, how God is mixing, when he's talking about man mixing days and years and linking days and years. 77, verse 5. 77, verse 5. says, I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. 
the, the years of ancient, I've considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. times yeah. You know, parallelism. Uh, it, 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 the, the, the former means the same thing as the latter. To have considered the days of old, which is the same thing as the years of ancient days. All right. So, so in, in, in prophecy, when especially when it relates to mankind mm -hmm. and mankind's existence and human institutions, God measures it in days. So you have prophecy taking that same principle and concept and saying a day for a year. Uh, uh, that's the human principle. These, this human institution would last three and a half prophetic days. In other words, it will come to an end. Doesn't matter how long, it will come to an end. And God will bring it to an end. And this, this, this concept of, 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 of time, of the dividing of time, and times, times, and dividing of times, it's, which is the same thing as three and a half years, People like John Wycliffe, Martin Luther, John Calvin, Thomas Kramer. I'm talking about Calvin. A lot of the adherents of Calvin. And I'm, I'm talking to the Calvinists. You have embraced Calvin's concept of salvation, but rejected Calvin's concept of prophecy. Which is astonishing. Let's not throw the baby out of the bath water. So, um, so John Calvin believed the same thing. Thomas Kramer, John Thomas, John John Knox, Roger William, Cotton uh, Amata, Jonathan Edwards, John Wesley, as well as most of the Protestants of the 16th and 18th centuries felt that the early church had been led into great apostasy by the papacy and identified the Pope with the Antichrist. All of these great men. Because they understood the same biblical principles. But we moved on from there and we, 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 we went to, to the understanding and all of these were unclean and there's a way that you must address that which is uh, unclean we went on to look at the book of revelation the book of revelation chapter uh, uh, um, 13 and in revelation chapter 13 you saw there two three beasts in revelation chapter 12 you had the dragon it bleeds over in Re from Revelation chapter 12 to Revelation chapter 13, where the dragon goes and he raises a beast from the sea. He raises a beast from the earth. So here you had in Revelation chapter 10 and 11, in Revelation chapter 10, there is an angel that stands with one foot upon the sea and one foot upon the earth. In Revelation chapter 13, you see the dragon, which will represent Satan, but also Satan doesn't act by himself in many cases. Satan works through institutions and empires. When it comes to fighting against Christ, Satan works through institutions and empires. When he wanted to kill Jesus, what did he do? He worked through Rome. It was the Roman soldiers. That killed all the babies of Bethlehem. It was, it was, it was the Roman soldiers that drove nails. It was the Roman cross upon which Jesus was crucified. The devil uses nation, nations and empires. He uses systems and structures of this world. He builds them up, and the devil rallies the world against her maker. That's how the devil rules. That's how the devil fights against Christ. And then we, we moved on. We, as we looked at, 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 at the book of Revelation, Revelation, we saw that, 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 that from Rome, you would have Rome giving power to a church. And the, sec, the, 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 the beast that comes from the water represents the Roman church. 
Then there's a beast that comes from the land. It represents the United States of America. My brothers and sisters, if you look back at, at, at what we at, at the at the program, you would understand as we as we lay precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, and, and we look at history. This is this is a recap. Please look back at, at, at the series. But uh, we moved on from there to say that God will have a message. Yes. Revelation chapter 14. And it will be the last message. It is called the everlasting gospel. Revelation 14, verse starting with verse 6. It's ending with verse 11. But there would be a group of people. Yes. They are called the patience, patience of, of the, the saints. saints. And, 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 and they are standing. Mm -hmm. They are the saved the patience of the saints. How are they identified? They keep the commandments of God and they have the faith of Jesus. The same way they identified in, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. They keep the commandments of God and they have the testimony of Jesus. For the testimony of Jesus, according to Revelation chapter 19, 10, is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So there will be a miraculous uh, prophetic manifestation in the last day church. They would keep all of God's commandment because according to the book of James, if you break one, you break all. Mm -hmm. They would have the, the, the prophetic manifestation in the church, which would, be, which, would be, which would be an identifying mark. And they would keep the commandments of God. My brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, it is a tragedy that that that, that probably 99% of the Christian church would violate at least one of the commandments of God. The Bible says if you break one, you break all. So ladies and gentlemen, it's absolutely important to embrace all the commandments of God so you be, will be identified as the people of God. Most churches will accept nine and reject this one commandment. Hmm. Will embrace all nine, and that doesn't make them legalistic, but they will reject one because that one is legalistic. Yes. Oh, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, today God is saying that the last day church, the last day people of God will re be represented by those who would embrace the commandments of God and a prophetic manifestation would be in their midst as a signal, as an identifying mark of the true remnant people but jesus will come and rewards will be given in revelation chapter 16 rewards will be given revelation chapter 17 god will crush the beasts and the systems and structures of this earth revelation chapter 18 the merchants of the earth will stand back as they see god in his power and wrath destroying the people who have destroyed his saints and brought his truth to the dust. And finally, finally, you have in Revelation chapter, uh, chapter 19, judgment is given. Chapter 20, uh, 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 Eden is restored to the people. The people of God is vindicated. God and his people is vindicated. Like Daniel chapter 7, God and his people, they are vindicated. And then sin and sinners are no more. There is no tears there. God himself is in the midst of his people, walking on streets of gold. This would be the end of the great controversy. Elder? Amen. Amen. Thank you for that recap, Pastor. Do it may sound as a lot to internalize in one go. Feel free to, to, to just go back to our previous episodes where you can get this in a more, or I should say, a more detailed manner. Or write to us. Mm -hmm. Or write, or to, write us. to us. Yes, write, write to us on our, mm -hmm. our website, or sorry, on our email, which is the real Bible based prophecy at gmail.com. That's the real Bible based prophecy at gmail.com. Come, or you can call us or you can send a, a WhatsApp on to us at 2662761. That's 2662761. My brothers and sisters. And one thing, if you're outside of Trinidad, the area code is 
1866. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. You know, I overlooked that a lot of times. <laughs> well, I probably never did mention it. <laughs> yes, and those who are viewing on the outside or overseas internationally, your area code is 1868. That's 1868 266 2761. And I'll say that again 1868 266 2761. Amen. My brothers and sisters. When the discussion is ceased, how long, how long shall you be halted between two opinions? Oh, yes. yes. God will soon bring this world to an end. He has clearly outlined true prophecy in his word. And even Psalms 90 verse 12 tells us or teaches us that we ought to number our days. Number our days in these times. Just as we had a beginning, there will soon be an end. Who will you choose? What side will you be on? Truly, contemplate on this decision because as you have seen prophecy is fulfilling and it is upon us even in these times so take heed that no man deceive you so until we meet again have a blessed day and an encouraging week God is still in control let's pray Heavenly Father we Pray that your people would be willing to listen. Yes, please. And willing to obey. The line upon line, here a little, there a little, precept on precept, precept on precept, so that they would be led from milk to strong sure. meat. Hmm. And they would be led into a growth experience with Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, bless and guide, lead us, Lord. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. Be with your people who have listened yes, Lord. for so long. They are your people. Lead your sheep to hear your voice. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us on this installment of The Bible and You. Be sure to visit our YouTube channel for more videos. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll know when new videos are posted. Follow us on Facebook for updates and resources, and we'll see you again soon.